I voted against it because it is a very bad plan. I don't call it a plan, I call it a scam, and it's certainly not good for the people who live in District 1. They claim it's going to be trickle down, that they're going to double the standard deduction, but that doesn't count all the things that they're taking away. It's a direct hit at the middle class. You're going to take away deductions for student loans, uh, deductions for mortgages are going to be limited. You're going to take away the ability for businesses to deduct when they hire the disabled or veterans. Just across the board, things that hit right at the middle class. I was going to say, because these are things that everyday people are, you know, mortgages and stuff like that, you know, that are going to be dealing with. Um, so I guess moving forward then, uh, you know, what are you going to try to do back in Washington then? Well, I'm going to continue to fight this. It now moves over to the Senate side. This is so bad that the Republican-controlled Senate voted it out of committee totally opposed to it, not a single vote in favor of it. So they're moving on to their version. There's some things about it that are better, some are worse. One of the worst things about it is that it takes away the requirement for Obamacare, which will put the 13 million people immediately out of uh, health insurance. So the, we need to have people sitting down the table, open discussion, open rule where you can offer amendments, bipartisan effort to do real tax reform. Make the system simpler, make it easier, and make it fairer. Don't give all these breaks to the very wealthy and screw the people at the other end to pay for them. I'm Congresswoman, uh, since you mentioned um, Obamacare's individual mandate, mm -hmm. um, you know, several Republicans have claimed that this would result in over $300 billion in savings, savings that they can use to cut taxes. So why are they wrong in wanting to, rushing to repeal the individual mandate? Well, it will cut money so that they can pay for their tax breaks for the wealthy. And the reason it cuts money is they won't be giving subsidies to people who are then able to buy health insurance. My priority is that people be covered for health insurance, not give the wealthy or corporations breaks with that money. Mm -hmm. huh? uh, this also takes away your ability to deduct medical expenses. You have a traumatic medical experience that may last for several years, you won't be able to deduct that. And it hits local governments because it takes away the deduction for bonding, which allows you to build infrastructure, which is so much needed in this valley. And it's a tax shift. Even though they may lower one tax here or one tax there at the federal level, just shifts it to the local government because if they're not providing services at the federal level, local government's going to have to pick that up, like indigent care at UMC, for example. Low income housing would be another example. Now, on the um, House side, um, you, Congresswoman Rosen, and Congressman Kewen all voted against, while uh, Congressman Amade voted for. Is there any agreement among the whole Nevada delegation in terms of what they'd like to see with tax reform and with health care now that the Senate wants to try some version of Trump care again? Well, we want to see us sit down and work together. They don't want to do that. They took no amendments to this bill. It was a closed rule. There was no discussion. How can you come up with any kind of compromise if that's the way they want to do business? I don't know what Mark Amaday is thinking. I think he's misdirected. I think this affects all Nevadans, regardless of what district they live in. Do you see anything good in the bill at all at this point? Well, there was an attempt to increase the child care uh, deduction, but that really only helps people at the top as well. So uh, it is so skewed to help corporations and help the very top 1% at the expense of everybody else. That, and I don't mean just individuals, I mean small businesses too, because they've taken away a lot of their deductions, like I mentioned. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I think you got to throw it out and start over. Hmm. Um, in the past, um uh, Governor Sandoval has said he opposes um, these efforts to, say, get rid of the individual mandate, cut Medicaid, um, make other kind of changes that we've seen in these past repeal bills. Um, do you hold any hope that um, members of the Senate will listen to 
folks like Governor Sandoval and other Republican governors who've said they don't want these changes to the health care system. Well, they don't seem to be listening. Certainly Donald Trump doesn't seem to be listening. I commend our governor. He was one of the first to say we're going to expand Medicaid to help the people of Nevada. And he's been a strong proponent of keeping that in place. But it's the Senate that's put this back. You know, I've voted over 60 times against measures to repeal and so-called replace, even though they hadn't come up with any replacement. You do this, it not only hurts individuals who are getting the insurance through the exchanges, it hurts people who are buying insurance regularly or businesses that provide insurance because their rates are going to skyrocket. It makes the whole market unstable. Good? I have one more question. Oh, what, um, what is your biggest concern in terms of students and graduate students at this point with the bill? Well, I'm very concerned that students now can't deduct their what they pay on student loans. We hear all the time how people have high student loans. Now they won't be able to deduct that. Also, the quality of education, as our regent uh, mentioned earlier, will be threatened because people will be less likely to make donations if they are not deductible, or the universities won't be able to get some of that bonding money to expand both programs and the campuses.